Hey guys, good morning or morning for me and whatever time you're watching this. Uh, started another project and uh, my wife's birthday is coming up in like five days, four or five days. So she's been asking for like a bench. There's a bench around the corner that's uh, kind of fried and uh, it was an old indoor bench. Of course it wasn't going to hold up outside so she wanted something new. So just like anything worth doing, it's worth overdoing and I kind of wanted to I had a vision inside my head of, you know, two wagon wheels on each side of a bench and something in the middle. So that's the project we're going to go take on. Let me go turn to the side here. So I was at Todd's Farm last week, which is our local antique flea market. And uh, a friend of mine was there um, vending and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. And I asked him if he had any old wagon wheels, because that's a, actually what I was there kind of looking for. And uh, he's like... I don't have any with the wood spokes, but I have some with the steel spokes. And actually, well, that's probably even better because it'll hold up to the weather for a longer period of time. Actually, it probably doesn't really matter. But anyway, he said he had a couple of old uh, farm implements over at his property. And I went and looked at those uh, uh, a day or two ago. And uh, lo and behold, these were the smaller of the two sets that he had. There's another set that's actually probably about a foot taller than these. But these kind of, I like the profile that's on them too. So, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but we're just going to do and uh, see what happens. So I figured it'd take you along for that process. Um, so, I was trying to figure out what to kind of go and make the actual bench part out of in between. And first I was thinking, you know, what kind of steel can I use? What kind of this? What kind of that? Any scrap that I have? But I have nothing um, in enough of volume that can do it. So, I am going to, we're going to go to Brentwood. It's a place in Brentwood. I'm not quite sure what the name of it is, but uh, I guess when we get there, it um, will we'll have that name. I'll show you the old bench. <laughs> yeah. So that's what was there. Looking a little on the pathetic side. And I have a feeling this bench will never ever fit in that spot. But uh, I don't care. I just want to build. So that's what we're going to go do. And uh, we're also going to go take Krusty along. Figure we'll go to uh, a uh, lumber yard with a lumber truck should be fitting, and uh, might make for a good photo opportunity of uh, the truck still working. So uh, on the journey we go. I think we're here. What do you think? You think that would look like the place that uh, have a big sticks of wood? find out. Yeah, they got big sticks of wood. And lots of mulch. I think I'm the smallest truck here. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm new ourselves an entrance. Something that says entrance. Hmm. Jesus. Now I think we've got the right place. Sticking GPS. Yeah, this looks like it will have the, the sticks that we're looking for. We are looking for rough cut, kind of with the, the end curves still on it. Go inside and see where they send me. Well, I like that one. Problem is, it's eight feet long. But I found this one, 10 foot long, and it's got the curve on both ends. I think that'll be more comfortable. So I think that's our victim. We'll pay for that and load her in the truck. And a little clip for prosperity with a lumber truck in the lumber yard. Got wood. Yeah, 
right, so I'm back home and uh, kind of moved some stuff around, emptied the garage out. Uh, the double cab went into the tent garage and uh, it's got a trailer and a bike knocked out. And uh, I figure I'll park Krusty back in here as it's summertime and who knows when I get back to the double cab. Anyway, onto the project at hand. So here's the piece of wood, it's 10 foot two, something like that wide. And I figure I'm gonna go rip it in half and make two pieces out of the same size. One problem. <laughs> so what do you put the square on to make it square? And I don't know how good the ends are to use that as a, uh, a guide of sorts. I don't figure it would be fairly close, however the tree went in and got clipped. So, I'm going to need to go figure that out first. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably take a tape measure across the whole thing and I'll see if I get like, you know, I measure from that side across and it's 10 to and if I measure from this side across it's 10 to. Uh, at least I'll know, I don't know what I'll know. <laughs> but it'll give me the, uh, the illusion of maybe that end is somewhat square and what I'll do is I'll measure up five foot one, make a mark, measure up five foot one, make a mark, and then try cutting it with a chainsaw and go from there. And of course that didn't work out because the top was 122 and a half and the bottom was 122. But I'm kind of looking at this edge, it looks fairly square and I put the square on it and um, it didn't leave like air gaps. And so I ended up coming off of that side it's, it's kind of lined up to the line. It looks like the square is going somewhat down the middle of it. Close enough, anyway. I don't know if you can see there. So, there's the problem there. So, I figure we'll go five foot. I'll go five foot, do my best to get, make a nice straight cut going across there. And then I'll lay, take this piece, I'll lay it over the top of the other one and we'll trace it so they kind of match each other. And go from there. So, yeah. Let's do it. And for the sake of quietness, plus I didn't want to put any gas in my uh, gas bar chainsaws for one cut or two cuts. I'm going to go try an electric chainsaw. I'm not sure how good the blade is on this, but... Uh, swap them around and let that one be on the bottom we'll we'll cut off the excess of that and we'll see how it looks yeah, there's a clamps on there the other end looks pretty good again it doesn't have to be perfect now we're gonna have room to get in there
bit more manageable pieces now. And uh, I'm a noob when it comes to wood. I had a bunch of numbers on the end of it. This one had a 30. And uh, he said uh, it's uh, two and a quarter a, uh, a board foot. And I'm like, a board foot? I don't know what the hell a board foot means. I'm like, a board foot. So, okay, and it's one foot, and that's 225. So I'm like, a piece of wood's 30 bucks. No, that's 30 board feet because it's two, two inches and something thick. A board foot is uh, 12 inches wide, one inches deep, 12 inches long. So they figure there's 30 board feet that are inside that. So that piece of wood was like 65 bucks, something like that. It was. Sixty-seven fifty. So that's not too bad still. And it's pine. Now if you went with a hardwood, I saw a piece that was in there. Whoops. And it was uh, 400 bucks. So we're gonna do some exterior uh, polyurethane after it's all together. I figure I'd do the same with the wheels too. I'll wire wheel the wheels and uh, knock off the heavy rust but leave all the pitting and everything and, like the old look to them. And we'll just urethane those also so they won't rust back up and just have that, that good metal looking color. All right, so now I'm gonna start figuring out how I'm gonna go make an L out of these as what the seat would be. Maybe even uh, put the wheels on each side of it and we'll kind of do a visual, uh, what we like as far as uh, how it's gonna line up to the wheels. Yeah, that's what we'll do. There we go, we got ourselves a little bit of a mock-up going on there. It's kind of nice about the lift too. I can change the, the height as needed. So, um, like it, it's comfortable to sit in right where it is right there. The scale of the wheels seem like it fits the sides of them. They could be a little bit smaller, but again, I have, you have to work with what you got, right? Uh, I tried pushing them back, you know, rolling them back further. I didn't quite like that. And I think I might take the back and maybe flip it around so that that little that big cut right there is on top, but I'm not sure yet. So I was going to try and put like angle iron on the ends of them and kind of bolt them to the side, bolt it to the side and, uh, you know, weld the corner and then weld that to the wheels. But I'm wondering if I might be better off putting just bracing right across underneath it, you know, going right across, right across, bolt to the bottom, right across, right across, bolt to the top or making just like some kind of L brackets and kind of like where the clamps are now and then, you know go down and across. So I think I'm gonna start walking through the hoard a little bit, see what I have for material and use that for making our decision. I don't wanna use anything that has bright shiny metal for the same reason I'm using the old wagon wheels. We want it to make it look like it's uh, been around for a little bit, you know. So I'm go shopping, see what I find. Yes, yeah, so I walk them behind by the hoard, and I have this old staging. I've used it in the past, and then I haven't used it in forever. I want to say I've not used it in 15 years, and it owes me nothing. And I don't know if I want to continue to use it. And I see the cross bracing. Looks pretty stout, so I'm thinking maybe I'll go steal a couple of pieces of this. And it's got that old kind of rustic kind of look to it. So maybe we'll uh, grab a couple of these. They should be scissors. Each one should be a. There we go. Time gauge. It's in the, it's in the ground, eight inches, half inch a year. So we'll take that out and we'll see if we can kind of go work with them and make something out of them. All right, so I decided to back pedal. Uh, I did not like the thickness of that metal, but I still may use it for something else. I kind of want to make the out, two outside edges pretty uh, stout, uh, so to speak. So I did find some, looks like two inch angle, and we're gonna go use that for pretty much like what bolts to the bottom what bolts to the back and I'll, I'm gonna make that angle like a lot something like that and uh, we're gonna go cut that corner and weld that corner up 
We're gonna hit the angle first. So you can see my angle finder on there. We're gonna trace that out, weld it, and kind of clamp it. Do one on the other side, and you'll see why I want the outside edges uh, so tough. Be back. Yeah, do a couple clamps on there. Make sure that everything was going to line up from side to side. And that looks like it should be pretty good. Might fudge this corner in just a little bit. This side's a little skinnier than that side. That should actually be pretty stout. I'll see how it is after it's together. If I feel that the back is a little on the bouncy side, I'll put another gusset plate inside here. But it might also be just perfectly fine the way it is. So. So now I got to go uh, mark a bunch of holes and uh, drill a bunch of holes so that we can bolt right through. I was going to do screws, but I decided I will bolt it. So in the future, when the wood starts to shrink down a little bit, you can just kind of suck it up a little. Let's go see what we got for a stash. Just so happened to have this awesome selection, huh? Nothing there. Along it goes, and it rightly. Here we go. What do you think? As long as it's long enough, just the right size, and the heads can kind of sink into the wood a little bit. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go, uh, go get my uh, soapstone marker and try to make some even marks. I don't know, maybe four. Maybe four and four, three and three. Don't know. And voila, no clamps. So it's a it's a seat of sorts. Kind of sunk them down. I'm gonna get them go a little bit further because I'm gonna run over it with a sander. But uh, you should be okay. Plus, over time they're gonna want to reseed a little on the back. Yeah, it's just bolted. So we'll cut them flush too on the on the final. On the final final assembly, I took and I hit a, the sander on the edges just so I wanted to make sure that um, this gap was not going to grow from sanding, kind of so it'll kind of help it from racking. Now I got to see how good it is front to back. You know what? If I go, I just go and pull it forward. Plenty. That's fine. That's not going anywhere. Again, if I feel like I do need something, weld some kind of funky medallion right there in the corners. Now, now we got to go figure out how to go make that attached to the wheels. So that's going to be the next step. We're going to go wheel them over, wheel the wheels over, and we'll go see what we got for. Uh... Man, that's got to be harder on your arms. Anyway, we'll wheel them over and we'll try to figure out how that is going to go attached to that. I got an idea. Hopefully it works out. And for my next trick, I was going to make it so that the bench was just kind of welded to each side of that spool. I could take that where the uh, angle brackets are. I weld them, weld them to those hubs right there. And I think that um, we make it a little bit fancier and do something as far as making it uh, swing by itself. So I think um, probably four chains hanging down off the wheels to the chair itself would make that um, kind of a, uh, a cool feature. You know, have that rock in between there. Um, so of course, you know, we can catch one here and then the problem is we're probably going to have to be somewhere up here because my 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 fear is that it'll want to just go and flip back, you know. So I'm going to go see how we're going to go about attempting that where it wants to stay um, front side down. <laughs> 
lean back and just it just flips you over <laughs> to the, the back of the thing. So um, I don't know if I just want to. <sighs> Start welding up and just attach some bolts. You know, stick bolts out of there and some bolts out of there. You know, a bolt out of there and then a bolt out of there and let the section of the chain hang. It probably doesn't even need to be that much too. It's not like I need to to hang the whole length of the thing. Figure if I come up here, probably gonna have to come off one of the spokes. Say, rotate it so that this one is. What do you need? Eight inches of chain, maybe, and then I maybe I can come down eight inches from here to here, and that should probably hold it. I'm figuring it out as we're going along. Can you tell? Yeah. So why don't I just go and try that, and we'll see how it works. And if it doesn't, we just cut it off and we start over, right? And worst case, we just weld that to that and, and be done with it. But uh, let's see how that works out. If we like that, then we'll start building the uh, structure for underneath it to keep the wheels from rolling away. Yeah, let's go shopping. Yeah, it might be. I think you get a bolt through there if I cut the other link off. Probably the heavier ones though might match the scale. They got real big. Hmm. Do I want that? With that. I'm probably thinking this one. What do you guys think? That might look better. The problem is that's probably going to take up too much room. Yeah. Hanging down, it's going to... I don't know. Maybe I'll go hang it next to it and look. Find out. Alright, so I ran out of time yesterday and it is now the next day. Not that that matters to you guys. But, uh, I ended up going with the fat chain. And, uh... Hung it from four places, and it really doesn't need to kind of swing that much. I think, you know, uh, too much may actually be making it out of control, just so it kind of moves around a little bit. And if it doesn't work, we could just weld all the links solid. But for now, uh, I got some, uh, I think they're half inch bolts, by right? two inches long, all tacked in their uh, perspective locations. And then I just have a bar clamped across the top so that when I let the lift down, the wheels just don't go bloop, bloop, falling on the center of it. And uh, so we're gonna let it down. I just wanna see how it responds, if it, how it sits and all that kind of thing. And if that's good, then I'm gonna start modifying um, how the wheels uh, tie to each other and uh, maintain a perpendicular angulation. So let's uh, drop the lift down. Make sure my safety's off. Safety's off. Collapse. So far, so good. As far as I can go, the clamps are hidden. I think that'll be pretty good. Of course, I'll, I'll cut the, once I get it all finalized, I'll cut the hardware and I have um, the caps that are smoothed over on the end. I'll put those on the end so that whoever's sitting in isn't stabbing himself to death, you know. That should be good. I like that. I was afraid it was going to be too stiff, but that should be just fine. Sold. I'm sold. So now I need to kind of just square up the wheels to each other. I think I'm probably going to run a brace. And the bank weather should come off the back flat going straight across. And then I have to make um, a saddle for it to sit on or some kind of 
triangle that comes back and then back to the wheel just so the wheels don't you know the whole thing is <laughs> just, just roll over on itself <laughs> so my first thought was to take like a four by four and just lay it on there and trace it and, and cut a pattern into it and um, maybe drill some holes in it and we could run some bolts in it or uh, the other part again is just being the steel and uh, here's the wheel I, just like I said just make like two wedges on each side of it and have them permanently welded so I think I'm gonna go and do breakfast and contemplate that part of it as of right now I'm leaning towards the uh, uh, four by fours uh, I got some pressure treated lumber that might be a, uh, a better uh, solution but uh, who knows we'll find out when we get back so i'm gonna probably gonna clip this video right here sounds like it's, it's gonna take it's probably gonna be pretty much long enough and um we'll continue on uh the process of finishing up welding it taking it back apart sanding everything you everything and uh giving it a final beauty shot all right see you in a bit